celebrate this commencement. The assembly is hereby called to order. Please rise and join the Cornell University Glee Club and Chorus, accompanied by the Cornell University Wind Symphony in singing the Star Spangled Banner. yesterday set a new standard for the senior class convocation. And in fact, you know, I have to tell you that when the trustees hired me for this job, they neglected to tell me that my first major presidential address would come on the heels of the one given by Joe Biden. Talk about a hard act to follow. You know, but here we are, and I guess it won't do for me to simply reference Vice President Biden and assert what he said. So uh, let's get started, and let's start with something very important, acknowledging the many family and friends of today's graduates, those here in Shulkoff Stadium, as well as those watching the live stream. Graduates, I know you'll agree that without their love and support, you wouldn't be here today. And even though you thanked them yesterday, it's worth doing so again. So if you know where your family are seated, please stand up and wave at them, and if not, just stand up and wave, and they'll thank you <laughs> On a serious note, I ask that we take a moment to remember those no longer with us whose commencement this would have been. We honor those we lost from the graduating class each year by leaving an empty chair on the field. Their friend, family and friends are in our thoughts today. Since I started as president here only six weeks ago, I've had just a few opportunities to get to know the graduates, but it's been a real pleasure to meet some of you individually, for example, at your senior class reception, where I learned that you like your music to be very, very, very loud, <laughs> at meetings of the student assembly with student leaders, and of course, at yesterday's Ice Cream Social on the Arts Quad. And you being the Instagram generation, we've posed together in these and other encounters for a lot of selfies. In fact, let's get this out of the way right now. All of you take out your phones and we on the platform are gonna smile while you take your selfie with us. Go ahead, right now. for 
you graduates. Big transitions are important. It's why we mark them with celebrations like the one we're participating in now. They're time for reflection, for looking backwards at what you've experienced and what you've learned, and looking forwards towards what you'll do next, to your next adventure. Earlier this year, as he faced a different life transition, retirement, Daniel Freed took the opportunity to share his reflections with his staff. Now, I suspect that most of you have no idea who Daniel Freed is, so let me tell you. Freed is a career diplomat who served in the federal government for 40 years under six presidents, Republicans and Democrats, starting in 1977. He worked mainly in Eastern Europe, Russia, Serbia, Poland, as well as in Washington, D.C. He was an embassy political officer, an ambassador, a political counselor, a special envoy, envoy and more. And he's a Cornell alumnus, class of 1974. As you can imagine, with a career like that, Daniel Fried experienced many events that must have seemed quite improbable when he began in 1977. Things like the victory of the Polish Solidarity Movement, the fall of the Berlin Wall, and the breakup of the Soviet Union. As he reflected on such events in his retirement speech, Ambassador Fried said this, I learned never to underestimate the possibility of change, that values have power, and that time and patience can pay off, especially if you're serious about your objectives. Yesterday, Vice President Biden also counseled you not to underestimate the possibility of change, to recognize that while you are graduating into a world with significant challenges, so too have previous generations of students, and they have frequently met those challenges head on and made changes the world needed to be a better place. In fact, said Vice President Biden, you, the class of 2017, have an incredibly strong basis on which to make positive change. So where do you start? Listen again to your fellow Cornelian, Ambassador Freed. Recognize, he said, that values have power. Thus, if you want to create meaningful change, a good place to start is by clarifying your own values. Cornell, like all strong institutions, has a set of core principles that informs the values it holds dear. I suspect that these principles played a role in your decision to come here. They were certainly a large part of what brought me to Ithaca. And they formed an important backdrop for your experiences as a student. So as you leave this university, it is worth thinking about Cornell's principles and values, considering what role they've played in your education. 